Hello and welcome to the workbench. I have parts on the workbench. I have been seeing posts on the Facebook and on the YouTubes where people are asking what these parts are and how do you connect them together in order to make your RC car or crawler work. So I thought I would go through what each of these parts are and how to connect them. There are four main parts to any RC car. You have your transmitter, which is the part you control. You have your receiver, which is one of these things. And you either have a one that came with your radio, and they usually look about like this. Or you can get smaller ones that look like that. Now I'm using the radio link stuff. Yours may be different. You may be using the Dumbo RC or the one that came with your truck. This is the Traxxas one receiver that comes with the TRX-4M and this one also includes electronic speed control inside of it. And we'll get to the electronic speed control in just a second. But this is like one that would come with your car. So if we take away the extra ones and just look at the one part, we have the one part which is the receiver. This is the part that receives the signal from your radio. This is a four channel receiver. Your first channel is, the, you have one channel here, two, three, and four. The first channel is your steering. Your second channel is your throttle. So the first channel is your steering. The second channel is your throttle. And that's how that's controlled. Your third channel and your fourth channel, depending on your radio, are different things. Like on my radio, I can, I can have one of the channels be this switch or this switch. So this could be three, this could be three. Or this little knob could be three. I can program it however I want it to be. Most radios that I have seen, one switch is three, one switch is four. On the receiver, you'll see that there is a minus, a plus, and something that looks different. That's a, that is the signal. And if we look at a connector, you'll see that you have a black, red, and white wire. Or it might be brown, red, and yellow. The brown is equivalent to the black on this one. Red being equivalent to red and yellow being equivalent to white. So these are the same things. They're just different color wire shieldings on here. Other than that, they're exactly the same. So the black in electrical terms, black is negative or minus. Red is positive or plus, and the white in this case is signal. So when I plug in a speed control, I would plug it into channel two, and I would plug it in so that the black, red, and the white correspond with whatever is written on the receiver. Minus is black, plus is red, signal is white in this case. So let's talk about channel one first. Channel one is normally your steering servo. And your steering servo could be a small little baby servo or it could be a pretty large ser servo like this one. They'll have a wire coming out of the end of it as well and that'll plug into your receiver. Again, this has brown, red and yellow negative positive signal so i will plug this in to my receiver like that and now it's plugged in and ready to go the electronic speed control is the next part so the electronic speed control controls your motor and there are two kinds of electronic speed controls or three there's the one that comes built in. There's a brushless one that has three connections that connect to your motor. It'll also have a connection that connects to your battery. It'll have a connection that connects to your receiver and it will have an on and off switch. This is where the power comes from. The power comes from the battery. It goes into the electronic speed control. There are inside of your MOSFETs, there's switches. It turns the 
the power on and off very quickly and that controls the power to your motor it doesn't control the power with um, a resistance like less voltage it's turning it off and on and the more it stays on the faster it will be the other type of speed control that are available it looks the same but they're not this one's a little bit different this is a brushed speed control for a brushed motor a brushed motor has two wires that come off of it not three and so a brushed speed control will have two plugs here or two wires that'll go to the battery plug i've cut mine off because i'm not using it but it'll have a connection similar to that one on there and then you'll have two connections that'll go to the motor you'll have your connection that goes to your receiver and then a connection that goes to a switch it matters which way you plug the motor in if you plug it in the wrong way your car is going to go backwards when you want it to go forwards so all you have to do is unplug these two wires reverse them and plug them in so depending on your on the transmission and depending on the gearing in your car it all depends on which way the motor is going to go sometimes the negative will be against the blue and sometimes the negative will be against the yellow that's why it's yellow and blue and not red and black so you can plug it in this way and the motor will spin a direction clockwise or counterclockwise i don't know it doesn't matter to me because once i get it in i plug it in one way i try it it's the car going the right way no if it's not you unplug these two and you plug them in the other direction so you cross the wire go make it go the other way and then the motor will spin the opposite direction when you go forward and then the car will move forward so don't worry if it's going the wrong way you don't need to reverse it in your in your controller you can just swap the leads and it will be fine on a like on a brushless motor there are three wires and so you'll have yellow red and black but in this case it's yellow orange and blue well you'll plug them in so they're about the colors you want them to be so yellow to yellow blue to black in this case and red to, to orange and then you'll give it a try and see if the motor goes the correct direction if it goes the correct direction you're in good shape if it goes the incorrect direction that is the car is moving backwards instead of forwards you reverse two of the wires not all three you reverse only two so in this case i'm going to plug the black one into the orange and then this one into the blue and then the motor will spin the other direction and then when you try your car it'll go forwards instead of backwards again okay so you only need to reverse two to get a brushless motor to go the other direction all right i've got my brushless motor plugged in we're going to put a piece of tape on there so you can see it spin we're not going to worry about brushed because i don't have all the parts for that we'll put a piece of tape on the end of this okay. there's the motor and i have a battery here a lithium polymer battery or lipo has two connections on it it has a balance lead and it has the main lead the balance lead connects the black and the red they actually connect to the same place as these two and the yellow lead connects in between so the black and the red will the you know, the red may connect here and the black will connect here and then the yellow will connect on the end and that allows it to charge the batteries independently this is a two cell so i only have three wires if this was a three cell battery i would have four wires so you have one one less or you have one more wire than the number of cells and then you will plug in your balance plug into your charger and your main plug into your charger to charge your battery you gotta have them both plugged in if the charger has both plugs the charger only has one plug it is most likely the balance plug 
and you'll charge your battery with the balance plug. So we're going to get our battery plugged into, let's see, let's do we have it all plugged in? No, I don't have it all plugged together. I forgot to plug in the electronic speed control into the receiver. Now this is an important part. You have to have the electronic speed control plugged in in order for the steering servo to work and for the receiver to work because the electronic speed control not only provides the power to the motor but it also provides the power to the receiver and the power to the steering servo. So you've got to have this plugged in to both things in order for it to work. I will plug in the electronic speed control into the battery. Okay. And let's plug, let's turn on the radio. And it's not working. It's not working because this receiver is not bound to the radio. You have to bind your receiver to your transmitter. That's how these talk to each other. So if you buy one of these off of Amazon or AliExpress by itself, you need to make sure that you get the right one for the model of your transmitter and it will not come bound. You have to bind it because it doesn't know which radio you've got. Each radio has a different serial number on it. It's binding the serial number to the receiver. So how do we how do we do that? Well, we turn it off. We hold the turn off the that. We hold the bind button down. There's a bind button on this one. Some receivers have a bind connection, and you'll have to look at the instructions on how to do that. But you'll unplug one of these and plug that into one of these, and it will short one of the, these two things together, and then it'll put it into bind mode. The receivers that I use have a button. This one has a button right here. Some of them have a button on the top and you have to press it down with a little plastic thing to press it down or a toothpick. Uh, it all depends on the receivers. They're all a little bit different, but the concepts are the same. So I'm going to hold the bind button down. I'm going to turn on that, the electronic speed control, and then I'll turn on the radio. And then it should bind these two together. See how the light stopped blinking there for a second? So now it should work. There it goes. Come on. Okay. Now we're working. So the servo is servoing and the motor will motor. So these are the main components of a radio controlled car. The battery, the electronic speed control, the drive motor, the receiver, and the servo, and finally the transmitter. The transmitter and the receiver have to be a matched pair. They have to be on the same frequencies, the same protocols that they talk to same manufacturer kind of things, and you have to bind them together. The electronic speed controls, they'll work with just about any radio. Okay, Unless you have a radio that came with your car that has an electronic speed control inside of it. If you do, you are not going to be able to get this to bind to here because they talk different protocols. Even though they're both 2.4, they talk different protocols. And I can't connect this to this. So I have to replace this unit with these two things. Okay. And that's a common thing. That's a thing that I do with most of my cars because this radio allows me to, to bind up to 30 different receivers. Now why is that cool? Because I can take one transmitter out there and I don't have 50 transmitters or however many different models I am. And then I got to figure out which one's what. All that other stuff. It's no fun. I got just the one, and I can tell it which model I'm using. I think I've covered everything. If you have any questions, put them down there in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer those. I'll either answer them right there in the comments, or I'll create another video for you if that question is a little bit more in-depth and it's too much to type. I'm 
or it's an important thing that I forgot, I'll make another video about this. Like, subscribe, do all of the things. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.